literally one of the biggest, if not the biggest things to come to the game. It's big, because this is Old School's next big area expansion. I remember doing the Winter Summit back in, back in December, right? But yeah, I think tonight's gonna be even better. Yeah, it has literally all been leading up to this moment, you know, we've been. The Summer Summit was a massive success, and one update was so anticipated that we're jumping right into that. In April of last year, Mod Husky tweeted a concept for what came to be called the Blue Inferno. Its real name was the Tassacal Trials, and it was teased as the end-all be-all of endgame content, with the first waves being as intense as the entire fight caves. But then we heard nothing else for a long time, until... In the capital, you'll find the imposing Fortis Colosseum where you can prove your worth in a brand new fight cave style combat encounter. The Fortis Coliseum. Well, I'm seeing in chat Rip Blue Inferno, but yes, but actually no, is sort of my answer <laughs> to that, because it's not Tassacal Trials, but it's Tassacal Trials. Like, And Adicon's given us everything we need to know about this outrageous test. Old School RuneScape's Summer Summit just released this roadmap for content, leading into 2024. Alongside news and updates for Deadman, new quests, QOL, and events, Valamor just took the stage as the final reveal, and I think many people thought Valamor would be a 2025 or later expansion, but here it is. In the first planned wave of content, the Colosseum is going to be a major focus, and we'll be talking a little bit about what to expect from it in this video. The Fortis Colosseum is found on the east side of Valamor's capital city, Civitas Illa Fortis. This arena is the setting for a wave-based PVM minigame, much like Barbarian Assault, Fight Caves, and Inferno. The direct inspiration is the Tassacal Trials. For starters, it consists of 12 waves, compared to Inferno's 69 waves, and these waves are split into three sections, waves 1 to 4, waves 5 to 8, and waves 9 to 12. 1 to 4 are aimed at players who have received a Fire Cape, whereas waves 5 to 8 are aimed at players who haven't yet received an Infernal Cape but are fairly competent at PVM, and lastly waves 9 to 12 are aimed at players capable of obtaining an Infernal Cape. There are other aspects to the trials, such as buffs and debuffs the player must choose. There's also the concept of Soft Enrage, which allows you to risk what you earned in the previous waves to challenge the next one. This is a little different from Telos-style Hard Enrage, which allows you to risk the entire set of loot for all the existing kills, rather than just the waves. Personally, I'd love to see a combination of Soft and Hard Enrage in this new content, as it's a custom difficulty modifier the player can choose, similar to Invocations at TOA. In terms of the rewards, they are still entirely up for debate. Some of the proposed ideas were as follows. An untradeable Biss item which upgrades after beating the boss on waves 4, 8, and 12, a tradable bits item obtained as a rare drop from the standard loot system becoming more common from later waves, a potentially consumable item to provide some more consistent money used for something that's not particularly clear but okay, and a pet of the boss on wave 12. This seemed like it might even be guaranteed. Now that we've run through some of the ideas, you can see that the trials makes sure that the early waves are accessible, gives some rewards and incentive, makes it replayable for GP, and has burst concentration rather than non-stop concentration. All of these features make sure to extend from Fight Caves and Inferno and improve on them. So now you've had a look at the trials and the reskin that is the Colosseum fight, what do you think? Leave a comment down below on how you think the Colosseum fight should differ from the original Blue Inferno, or if there's some better ideas for implementation. Thank you to Adikon for this breakdown. He's a great creator, and you deserve to be subscribed to him. So let's get his YouTube channel to 14,000 subscribers today. Link in the description below. And welcome to RuneScape Chronicles. Deadman mode is coming this Friday, and players can't wait. That was all right. I think that should be a decent game mode. Now, I don't know if anyone's actually read the Deadman blog, but is it just me or will the breaches be the most clan man mode content ever? Because as far as I'm aware, I don't think I'm gonna do any of those. I am gonna avoid those like the absolute plague. Avoiding breaches is definitely a strategy and the economy is already feeling dead man mode coming. I'm fat fingering. Wow, bonds are right, Mill. Wow, dude. They're probably gonna go up even more with DMM as well. And with Dead Man on the way, the PKers are practicing. Well, chat, we hit a 98, man, and I know I can hit a one. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna prove it to you right now, bro, just in case you're in disbelief. Without a fire cape, I can still hit a hundred because of this insane new ring. Are you ready? Wow! The 100. Skill specs, just go get a fire cape. It takes like 30 minutes. Pew, you're scaring him, bro. Oh my! 
Okay. <laughs> Well, congratulations, skill specs. The mythical cape coming in clutch. This guy tried to bait pure spam into multi. Is this, is this guy DC'd? But now his internet's out. <laughs> the Lura! We got the Lura! 28 mil from a Lura. I get DC. Bro, I feel bad. I'm gonna give him something back. I feel bad, man. I'll give him a little bit back, because I genuinely do feel bad, like, if you get DC'd. He didn't even say thank you. Didn't even say TY. Savage. But we all know the wilderness is a savage place after all. Right, Dino? That's good. Now we freeze him. Beautiful. That was a 70 into a 48 through prayer, and I think he just got smited. Was that a 48 through prayer? Loot was 25 mil. Smited his AGS from him. He was risking his staff anyway. Brimstone ring, respectable. This is sort of a good starter PK setup. Obviously, he wouldn't be risking the AGS normally. And I do feel a little bit bad, but not bad enough. Male music doesn't use quest guides. And she's an ultimate iron woman, doing quests blind without a bang. Congrats on the quest cape with an incredibly difficult account restriction. <laughs> Let's quest cape back! Let's go! You can do it in one click. Oh, wouldn't it be like... Now? Where are you going? No f Way, dude. Holy shit. Hey! Dino's keeping sharp on his 1v1s before dead man. I really want a hundred spec, man. He prays Melee here. 30 mil PK from the man. Insta Joshi's opponent is getting close to the teleport line. <laughs> A 55. Imagine if you dropped an item and people could instantly see it. Well, that's actually how it's supposed to be. In an ancient patch note found by Lazpak, Andrew Gower said that the one minute delay before dropped items appear to other players was actually a bug. But players quite liked this bug, and thankfully, he changed it back after the outcry. More from Reddit, Russian Vol used osrs.world to pull some very cool images. Hmm, kind of reminds me of our desk mats. You can get your very own desk mats at rschronicles.com. 20% off right now. Hey guys, it's Tipoyo here, and today I'm going to stand on the Zolra dock until I see a Zolra bot. Let's see how long it takes. All right, so be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Pure Spam and Doobie Dobbies are in a brutal fight, and Pure Spam is completely out of heels. No way! Oh my god! There is no way I turned that around! Bobby's whip has an opponent stuck on beast mode. This is brutal. Bro, can you stop hitting 30s for a second? Just for a, for a moment, can you stop hitting 30s for a moment? Say! Mimic showcased 200 million defense XP on Twitter, and only two months ago, they got 200 million strength as well. For those who don't know, Mimic was the first to 99 prayer in old school RuneScape and the fifth person to max, rank 89 overall, but still has a fire max cape. We just thought this was a little funny. Gentlemen, I have unfortunate news. It's not about those farmer spoilers again, is it? Kid Rock has been photographed drinking a Bud Light. Oh my oh god. Oh my. No. No. Collection logs. Oh, yes! Completed. That's a much more important pick. 
Court Kazard is going for another insane challenge. As you can see, he's going for all four Awakened bosses without banking. Each boulder at Leviathan must be placed intentionally. Getting dragged into melee range can be instant death. He's prayer flicking to save supplies. He's not allowed to use purple sweets either, so every hit point and prayer point count. Oh, small mishap, but he clutches the kill. The Whisperer is next, but he has no health left after Leviathan. Blood Barrage helps him as he effortlessly weaves through phases. Using L movements, he dodges each tentacle. And another boss down. It's on to Duke. The Scythe is 5 ticks, just like Duke's attacks, so his timing is built in. He just has to expertly dodge poison pools and the gaze attack. But that's no issue. And it's on to the beast himself, Vardorvis. The Ancient Godsword heals 25 damage for every successful special attack. Combined with his Blood Fury, the double attacks of the wake of Vardorvis' heads are a walk in Falador Park. He did the entire Blood Torva challenge without banking. What do you think? Is this the best old school RuneScape player right now? And today's creator spotlight goes to... Tedious. The collection log. We have at least 50,000 of you that watch these videos daily, but this channel would be nothing without the other RuneScape content creators. So our goal today is to have at least 1,000 of you guys go follow Tedious on Twitch. Go smash that follow button and let's get him up to 21,000 followers. Go, go, go!